What's going on people? My name's Timmy Joe making videos about gigantic 10, 11 year old monstrous $4,000 computers all up on the internet. And as you saw from the, you know, whatever, the title or the, you know, the thumbnail, we're asking some existential questions here today because I have a real life scenario, a real life person, a client of mine who has this mentality that you should spend the most money ever as you can on a computer. Therefore, you don't have to buy a new computer for 10 years. And that's what this is. And he's looking to do a new computer, an upgrade, and his mentality is I need to save $6,000 so I can buy the best computer so it will last me 10 years. I know, like, a lot of you are running in the comments saying, what? That is not how it works. That's not the best solution at all. And I understand, but hopefully, client will watch this video. He knows I'm doing some videos here. We see a GTX Titan X here. Pay respects by pressing F, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, he's got this computer here, literally spent over $4,000 on it in 2009 with the intention of it lasting as long as possible. Here we are 11 years later, and it has lasted quite a long time, but is it a great gaming experience? Was it a good idea to do this? We're going to go through it here today. So, specs on the computer. Thermal take, cool your life. No, it's a Armor Plus MX. Here's Tiger Direct doing a video on it back when it came out. Pretty cool. Okay, it's got blue LEDs and a fan on the side of it. 280 mil or, oh wait, this has got to be way bigger than that. 400 millimeter fan or something. But um, it's not a fan anymore, it's just lights because the fan clearly, i plug you bastard. The fan clearly hasn't been spinning in years. But when you plug it in, it kind of moves for a second. So it's like, how long has it been trying to spin for? Like years now, four or five years? So that made me laugh. See-through acrylic window, pretty innovative for the time, pretty cool. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven CD-ROM bays and these cool metal, like aluminum armor covers that protect them because I, I don't know why. But um, yeah, a lot of CD-ROM bays, but one of them is a little tray that uh, you can put your USB keys in, which is pretty cool. There's a little tray on top of this case as well to put your tchotchkes. And it doesn't come with the thermal take uh, cigarette lighter, the car cigarette lighter, unfortunately. But um, that is a real thing. <laughs> there are lots of space for hard drives down here too. You could put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, you know, that's about the case. That's the, you know, the case here. It's a pretty cool case. I thought it was worth putting on camera all by its lonesome. But uh, Antec, 850 watt power supply. I don't see an 80 plus rating on it. It's modular. I bet it was very expensive at the time, but I have a feeling it's a reason why the computer is not running the way it should be or you know why some of these components no longer function properly but it is powering the system and working just fine with a supplemental video card in here right now so i don't have any proof on that but i would not trust an antec power supply from 10 years ago no i would not uh but uh, then we get into some you know actual meat and potatoes of this thing it's 2009 you want the best well x58 right but then you're like why is there four dims in there i thought they needed this is a p55 motherboard because he said i7 no it's an Intel motherboard, and here's the model number. It's like, I don't know, DX58SO or something like that. Anyways, um, it has four DIMM slots, even though it's triple channel. So it's got one, two, three for triple channel, and then an extra one for whatever. Originally came with six gigs of RAM, some green PCB RAM. It's been upgraded. So this whole philosophy of not upgrading or, or not buying a new computer for 10 years already had to change something. I don't know if this RAM died or not, but uh, he then goes and buys four DIMMs in here, uh, totaling eight gigs of DDR3, and it's running at some ridiculously low speed, so it's not even set right in the BIOS. I haven't even, it's like running at like a thousand megahertz, 1066 or 1033 or whatever it is. So eight gigs of RAM running at a ridiculously low speed. It's got a, a i7-940 in it, so quad core, and yes, there was Extreme Edition six core processors at the time, but those were like, half the budget of this computer, even though this computer's budget was like $4,000, especially here in Canada. So, you know, you get the quad core with hyper threading at the time. That would have been pretty, you know, high end. It's uh, got a three gigahertz uh, base clock or a boost clock on it or whatever, you know, th three gigahertz. And then it's got the stock Intel heatsink on it. So like when I first saw this thinking maybe it was an older one, I knew it was X58 just based on how big that stock heatsink is. And it's just barely enough to cool this system. 
and then as soon as your thermal paste starts going bad, things start going south real fast, and we will talk about that. But rest of the features of the motherboard, it's got it's got a sound card, but he does have a gamer sound card in there. So that's that's something. I think it's a Creative Labs too. Uh, but uh, it's got a chipset fan on it with a blue LED. Look at that thing. That thing is monstrous. So pretty cool motherboard, pretty cool CPU. You could, and I know a lot of you are rushing out there, well, if you want some extra power, put a Xeon in there with six cores. We could do that, I guess. But I think it's time to throw the baby out with the bath water, as we'll talk about. So then, the last thing to talk about, hard drives. He had an original spinning drive in there, but did an upgrade. Because things change in 10 years, it has an SSD, it has like an 850 EVO with Samsung in it, and a two terabyte drive for his games. So nothing crazy there. But then you wanna talk graphics cards? Well, you see the Titan there. We'll talk about that in a second. But it came originally in 2009, he bought it from this boutique uh, computer store in my hometown that's still there. I, don't, I haven't seen them build computers in a long time. I think they just do a lot of IT service, but uh, they're still around. And they sold them this computer for over $4,000 and they sold them on the GTX 9, 295. $500 graphics card, highest end at the time. This is literally two graphics cards sandwiched together with a heat sink in the middle. Literally, I've done a video on it. There are two PCBs in here connected by a little thing and by some ribbons and stuff like that. And uh, this is a silly purchase at the time, in my opinion, because SLI, you have to know what SLI is. And I'm pretty sure based on the knowledge that this guy has, he probably didn't really grasp it and wasn't getting the most out of this graphics card. Buying a 290 at the time would have made way more sense. Or a 280, yeah. So, I don't know what's going on with that, but here's his graphics card. And we notice he upgraded. So this $4,000 10 years ago didn't work as it was. Because this thing doesn't even have DirectX 11 support. So it's definitely not going to work too much for today. But... Uh, he went and for another probably grand five years ago, added another grand to the total of the system and bought a Titan X, a Maxwell. It's basically a GTX 980 Ti that has 11 gigs of VRAM. And this thing was why I wanted to do this work for this guy. I really wanted to do a video on this. And he was telling me this thing I think is gone, but based on his knowledge of stuff, I was like, I bet I could get it working. Unfortunately, it was the first thing I checked. I put it in my GPU test bench. It starts up and works sometimes, other times it doesn't. Black screen. So I've played around with a lot of stuff, you know. Bumped the voltage up on it and all of a sudden it started working a hell of a lot better. I even got uh, some Firestrike stress tests out of it and ran some Time Spy. Here, I'll put them up on the screen. And some, uh, you know, and actually got some numbers out of this thing. Uh, not very great numbers, probably because the thermal paste on this was original and it was full of dust and it was not working right. But uh, I thought I had it fixed. I even took it apart gave it a brake cleaner bath, gotten all the dust out of it, hoping and praying that maybe some dust was causing the issue. It never is. I think uh, it's it's dead, or it's on its very last legs, and it's, it's just it's unsalvageable, unless maybe he wants to let me put it in the oven, or maybe I can get it in trade for some work here, and maybe we can see about putting this in the oven, because it, it does work sometimes. Other times it does not. It's not a normal problem where you know, it, it won't load the driver or something like that on launch. It, the, the, maybe there's some hope for this, so we'll leave this behind. But all in all, in total, $5,000, and this is what he has, you know, to, to, to say here 11 years later. Was it worth it? No, not at all. It's 2009, and instead of spending $4,000, let's say he spent $2,000. He probably could have got a P55 motherboard, a Core i5 first gen, uh, you know, same amount of RAM, you know, uh, there was solid state drives at the time, maybe he could have thrown in a 60 or 30 gig solid state drivers, oh, I don't know, but, uh, you know, could have probably spent a hell of a lot less money and got very similar gaming performance to what he had, especially if he would have not put this in there, but would have put, uh, you know, one of the single card, you know, versions in there, and then, in 2014 uh, you know, or 15, okay? We've got a whole lot of innovation, although not a lot of core count increases, but definitely frequency increases. So he could have maybe five years later sold this computer for uh, you know, maybe $800 or, or, or you know, even you know, some amount of money, would have got some return on investment and could have bought an entirely new $2,000 computer. And now sitting in front of us, we might have an i7-4770 
We might have, uh, you know, double the RAM, actually have 16 gigs in the damn thing. We might have had to, uh, the money at the time in the budget to buy a very nice graphics card, maybe a, a 780 Ti or something like that. And we'd be here with a much more updated sellable system. Like, are you gonna sell this for much money as it sits? Like, in my opinion, with some sort of graph, like I've got a 970 in here right now, just because that's, he might buy this off of me to get a couple, like, you know, more months off of this computer or whatever. I don't know what he's doing yet, but, uh, you know, you could fire a graphics card on this and maybe sell it for five, 600 bucks. Yeah, it's got some cool components. Maybe you could sell this motherboard on eBay for more, you know, for a premium or something like that. But ultimately, this is some pretty low end spec, and I wouldn't put this in a Craigslist ad as a high end computer anymore. It's definitely not, especially with the i7 that's in here. It gets, 400, whoops, 447 in Cinebench. Oh, and side note, when it showed up here, this thermal paste was original. It was 11 years old, I'm pretty sure. And it was absolutely like dust. And when you ran Cinebench, it would get about 280 points and the CPU would go to 100 degrees and throttle down to two gigahertz. So another problem with him buying the 10 year thing is he didn't do any maintenance. So what I akin this to is it's like he went and bought the best sports car he could in 1980, hoping it would last his lifetime. And here we are in 2020, and yeah, his Monte Carlo, some sports car from the 80s, looks kind of cool, it still makes some noise, but it's tired. Is it worth fixing if the power steering rack's leaking, if the, uh, you know, the exhaust is leaking, if the engine oil hasn't been changed in years and the engine is tired and you could go and make a list of all the things to get this car just running and it would still be worth more than the, the, the computer or the car is worth. It's like that. It's like I'm the mechanic and I'm telling you it's time to bring this thing to the junkyard. And I, I, I you know, it pretty much is if you want to do any normal gaming on it. Sort of. So let's apply that mentality to now. You want to spend, he said $6,000 is his budget. That could get you a pretty damn good computer. But does it make sense for him to get that level of a computer? Because this guy's a gamer. He doesn't do video editing. He doesn't do rendering. He doesn't do anything that multi-core like, would, would actually be good for him. So buying a Threadripper or buying uh, you know, a high-end Intel desktop part makes no sense in my opinion. You know what he needs to do is go buy a X570 motherboard and a 3700X and 16 gigs of RAM and uh, I don't know, uh, a GTA, like he's, he's got this. This is an equivalent to now maybe uh, RTX 2060. So he could go and buy a $2,000 computer and be miles ahead. He'd have, he could have double the cores, triple the IPC, and be like loads ahead and only spend $2,000. But let's say he wants to go even further than that. And like really, you know, maybe spent three thousand dollars. You buy a pretty damn good computer for three thousand dollars. Maybe buy a thirty nine fifty X. Maybe buy uh, the new like ten ninety K that's coming out or ten nine hundred K or whatever that is that's coming out probably tomorrow. You know, you could go ahead and do that stuff and uh, spend a little bit more money, and you're not going to see the benefit. Like. Uh, this guy is not going to be using uh, eight cores. There's just no way. But he could definitely buy like a 9700K and get away with it. But if you wanted to buy a, a higher end desktop part, there are plenty available now. There's 16 core parts from AMD that still would fit this $3,000 budget fairly easily. And you could do things like not use the stock cooler, buy uh, an uh, 80 plus bronze power supply, buy some really, really good NVMe storage, you know, and still come under like three, three, four thousand dollars. So him spending six thousand, imagine the computer that would give you. Now, let's say he does do that, buys a Threadripper, 32 core part, spends six thousand dollars, buys a 2080 Ti. In 10 years, do you really think those are going to be worthwhile parts to have? I don't know what the future holds. All I know is that in five years, I gotta guarantee you something's gonna change. And I would personally rather have spent half the money and down the line, have the extra money for the new investment in the brand new thing that just came out. Because you gotta know that in 10 years, the way things have been going, we're gonna want, probably you're gonna want a better computer. But maybe I'm wrong, because we are kinda hitting ahead with how many cores can go in a system, you know? Like, but imagine you would've done this a couple of years ago, right? 
Like, uh, it's, right now is a really weird time. If he had went and bought, like, it, let's say his timeline was a little offset and he was going to buy the new computer every 10 years in 2017, and he went out and bought the first gen Threadripper for as much money as those were, or, you know, an X299 18 core part or whatever. I don't know, that wasn't out yet. But, and then now you're thinking, like, three years later, there's 32 core parts coming out, there's 64 core parts coming out, there's way higher clock speed, way better IPC with the new Ryzen. So it would, I'd be pulling my hair out if I would have spent a huge amount of money on a computer a couple years ago because things have gotten so much better even in the last three years. So to kind of think about 10 years down the line is crazy. So what I want you to do with this is listen to my advice, Mr. Client. Let's go ahead and build you a $2,500 computer. It's going to be five times faster than this computer, all said and done. It's gonna definitely have double the cores. It's definitely gonna have uh, way better IPC. That's how fast the CPU can uh, actually spit you know, information out based on its clock speed. So this thing runs at three gigahertz. We're into five gigahertz now, but if you take that Intel 9900K and you run it at three gigahertz, it's gonna be twice as fast, if not more, than this system is at three gigahertz. Because things get better, right? And AMD's doing that at an even higher pace. So let's fit, like do a $2,500 computer for you right now, and then and come see me in five years and shake my hand, because obviously we'll have a cure for the coronavirus by then, a vaccine, and we'll actually be able to do that and say, Timmy Joe, thank you. We spent $2,500 and I had another $1,000 to go and buy something cool for my life. Here we are five years later. I got another $3,000 saved and we have super computers. We have, I don't know, platinum computers. That plat we have, what's the, um, the, the computer that's like the, the quantum computers. We have quantum computers now. Zen Quantum came out. Thank you five years later. We can go and buy that amazing thing so we can play real life VR games with like life life graphics and uh, you know you can't even tell anymore. You know five years is gonna be uh, pretty crazy. So that's the, the whole deal with this. This is a long video. I've been doing a lot of ranting but uh, unfortunately I couldn't save the Titan or at least I don't think I could. Maybe we'll see this in another video where I try a little harder. But uh, this computer, lasting 10 years for the guy, great. And yes, with a little bit of TLC here, a little bit of actual maintenance, and a new video card, he could still game on this. I mean, the games that he's looking to play, uh, you know, if I go and check his desktop, he's got Remnant, Day of Defeat Source, Final Fantasy, Mass Effect Andromeda, Unreal Tournament 3, uh, Left 4 Dead. There's a lot of games on here that probably run just fine on this system. But man, a lot of cool games have come out recently. And I can build you a $2,500 computer. You want to go even crazier, $3,000 computer that will blow your mind because the LEDs in it won't just be blue. They'll be every color of the rainbow. I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Have you ever bought a computer with the intention of it lasting 10 years? What's the most amount of money you spent on the computer? And what kind of disappointment did you have when a year or two later it was completely obsolete? I would love to know. But as far as this thing goes, I thought this was an awesome little time capsule of uh, 11 years ago. And with this kind of mentality of the 10 year computer and you know, with Moore's law the way it is with computing, you know, going so crazy lately with core and stuff like that. I thought this was an excellent time to look back on uh, kind of ass backwards, bass backwards philosophy on how to go about computers. And I will also say to my client, it's worth it every couple of years to blow the dust out of it and to change the thermal paste. And if you don't know how to do that, call me and I'll do it for you for uh, a very nominal fee. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much. Press F to pay your respects to the Titan X. Hopefully we can find one someday to do a review on because a 980 Ti with a bunch of VRAM sounds like a lot of fun to me. So I'll see you guys in another video. Obligatory fan spin at the camera.